Hey everybody, this is Junior here at the Runner's Desk. Welcome back, and it is that time to go over the Ultra Apple Watch from Apple. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the similarities between the uh, the new Ultra and the series watches. And that is, uh, I'm just going to look at my little notes over here, so don't mind me. Um, so uh, mo most things are pretty similar. Uh, the heart rate monitor is the same. The uh, touch interface on the screen is the same. Straps are kind of the same. They're interchangeable, um, but there's some new ones for the Ultra. Um, the weight is closer than you think. Like in your hand, you can kind of feel the difference, but once it's on, really can't tell too much of a difference. I can feel a little bit when I'm running, um, especially if, the, if, the, if I have the strap on the looser side. So I kind of go between two tensions on the strap a looser one and a tighter one and if it's on the looser one I'll kind of notice shifting it around a little bit more than on the regular series watch but other than that the straps is pretty similar and they're as you can see interchangeable I I mean I I, I don't even think I've ever put the regular strap that came with the ultra on here <laughs> it has basically had this strap the whole time I don't even know where the strap is uh, so um, both can both both can come in cellular this only comes in cellular uh, Again, the, the interface is very similar uh, since uh, um, the Apple Watch uh, operating system now has some really cool new features of interval and um, the heart rate zone. You have this heart rate zones now uh, that you can get maps on there, although the maps, is, the maps will be bigger on here. Uh, so intervals. So the operating system is really similar on both of them, but... Uh, they're similar. All right, I want to go over some of the differences between the Ultra and the series watches. Uh, and well, for one, the screen is bigger. Not only that, is the screen is bigger, but the screen is also brighter. So noticeably brighter out there. Uh, I believe it's like twice as bright. Uh, whatever it is, it's much more bright. I can easily see it. I that was one of my issues with the previous one that I couldn't really even use it outside. There's additional straps for this that don't come with this, but you can buy those separately, so that's not a huge deal. Prices, um, there is some differences in the prices. Oh, uh, this one here, really the most similar to this, is really a 45 millimeter uh, in, in a cellular option. So if you want the most closest thing to this without having to go to you know the, the price on this one is 800 bucks um you got to go to i think it's like 530 dollars so really in a way you're getting quite a bit here um you know you're, you're getting the titanium frame you're getting buttons i'm going to get into that later um you're getting to some extra features that you don't get on here like the the siren uh which i hope i never need to hear or use and um I mean, yeah, there's some features in there. Again, this one, I'm, this review is really for your general everyday runner. Uh, this is not for some extreme athlete. So there are other videos out there uh, more conducive to that. Um, this is, I, you know, I've been running for a long time. I've been running for the, over 30 years, um, but I, I don't do any, I mean, maybe an ultra marathon I would consider doing, but uh, it's been a while since I've done one. Okay, so what are some of the reasons you would uh, maybe want to prefer and stick with the series watches uh, over the Ultra? Um, besides just, of course, the price, um, you know, this is bigger. This is definitely bigger. If you got small wrists like I do, then uh, that could be a factor for you. You may want it the smaller size. It comes in 49, that is it. Um, it is it is heavier. So and again, depending on how you're wearing the strap uh, or how sensitive you, you are to the the weight of the watch, you know you'll notice. Like sitting like holding them right here, I can definitely feel this is heavier. But again, once it's on and it's nice and locked down with the strap, don't really notice too big of a difference. This is certainly a chunkier looking watch. 
and less elegant looking, I guess you could say, uh, compared to the regular series watches. The major factor for me is these buttons on here. So for me, I have very sweaty palms. Uh, so pressing just the touch screen doesn't always respond. So for me, having physical bio, uh, buttons, bile, having physical bile, ooh, ooh, no, who wants that? All right, uh, but having physical buttons is, is for me was really key. I, I just, I haven't been able to really use the Apple Watch um, yeah, for years uh, because of the just not responding to touch and so forth. I've had the same issue with other smart watches as well. So for me having the physical buttons, it was like, there's physical buttons. Yes, oh my. Uh, yeah, so that makes a big difference for me, having the physical buttons. Uh, when it, especially in the summertime when your hands sweating uh, uh, sweating like mine or if it's really cold and you're wearing gloves um, even the gloves with the little touch thingies on it eh, eh, they're hokey pokey sometimes um, it's nice to have the buttons okay so for me between the series 8 or the, or the series 8 any of the series this is actually a series 7 um, or the Ultra, uh, for, if you're just going to have one watch and you don't need the physical buttons, you're not doing anything too extreme out there, then you, you know, you might want to just stick with the series watch. Um, for me personally, I, I need the physical buttons. I need the physical buttons and I need the brighter screen, um, for me at least. So, uh, and then if you have like a series four, or maybe even the five, and you wanna use the GPS and listen to music at the same time, I tend to find those, they get a little more glitchy. So six is better, the seven and the eight obviously are, are fine, they have had no promise, but the previous older ones, you're doing a few different things going on at the same time on the watch. I, I From my experience, it got kind of glitchy, it would just blank out the uh um especially on the series four that's getting um that thing would just blank out couldn't do it i would come back and say no battery battery was 100 percent. so definitely more powerful processors um better battery and so forth in the newer ones of the series um and especially in in here but uh, for me i need the physical buttons and i needed the brighter screen that those were deal breakers for me Okay, now moving on to, I think, the tougher comparison. The Ultra or the Garmin, uh, in particular the Phoenix series. So, uh, that is a tougher comparison. A, if you have an Android phone, obviously any of the, <laughs> any of the Apple Watches are not going to be in the game, period. But uh, that is one feature with the Garmin is, you know, it can run on Android phone. So you can have the app on the Android phone. So um, so obviously you can use the watch just on its own, but uh, I think if you're not using the app, I think you're missing out a lot, a lot, I'm just saying, a lot. Uh, so between here, again, these two, um, uh, let's see here. So what uh, they, they both, let's see what the, is similar that both of them have. Uh, they both have very good GPS. They both have very, very good battery life um, for during. Obviously, the Garmin has more standby. So you can, if you're not using the GPS and, you know, with this screen on it, uh, it's, you know, the battery life is ridiculous. Like I just charged this thing for maybe an hour or so and it says nine days. <laughs> nine days. Okay, nine days. This thing will be snoozing and uh, having dreams of, of tea and chocolate cookies. Okay, so yeah. So standby, why? If you just need a, ba a battery life to be much longer, uh, you're looking at the Garmin. Um, so let's see here. They both can use external heart rate straps. So if you do take your heart rate serious and you want that external heart rate strap, um, they also have the, the wrist-based ones, but uh, you know, if you're, if you're taking your heart rate serious, then you, you really want to do the heart rate strap 
as far as other kind of power meter things and stuff like that, if you're just a kind of casual like me, kind of weekend runner and so forth, I don't think you're using a power um, straps or power meter thing stuff. But if you are, um, you certainly can do it on the Garmin. I think that's something that might be coming to the Apple Watch, but as far as I've read, I think, I don't think they, they do work on that. So let's see here. Let me take a little look at my notes here. Um, Let's see, they both do have buttons, so that's always, that's good. But I, real big difference is really the operating system and the uh, screen. So obviously, uh, Garmin uses this kind of like backlit type uh, or frontlit. It's a different screen, as you can see, it's very dark. And of course, the Apple Watch, you know, as they do, they use this, you know, bright screen on here. So as far as like daytime, if you're in the sun, uh, I still have to say the Garmin is really, really good. I'd say it's as good, if not better, than the Apple Watch. The at uh, nighttime, totally different. Um, I, I, I just this thing is just great at night. It's so easy to see. The contrast on the screen is very good. Um, I've never done anything where the Garmin's the, the light where the screen stays on at night. I don't know if you can do that, but I would imagine that would just drain the battery. Uh, but otherwise, you got to press the button for it to like turn on like that. I don't know if you can see it. So it will turn on and it's pretty good. But oof, my goodness, this is just great at night, um, especially with the always on. If you have like a, a series watch, um, like what is it? Six, I think is where they started or maybe five. They started with the always on screen. Really nice at night to have that. So let's see here. Both of them can get text messages and alerts and notifications and all that good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, if you are integrated with the Apple ecosystem and you have like Apple Music like I do, I mean, this is a clear winner. I mean, come on. So uh, you can get your Apple Music on here and so forth. Uh, you can do music on the Phoenix watches and so forth and some of the uh, Forerunners, but uh, I've never done it. I think I tried it once years ago. It was pretty janky. I think you have to like work in connection with like either a Spotify account or something like that. And, uh, or you can put only so many songs on here. This, the Apple Watch, if you have like an Apple Music subscription thing, this thing just keeps playing and playing and playing and playing. And you can just tell it to like play, hey, you know, I want to hear uh, the new Taylor Swift song or something. Okay, so just to recap three, the, between these three watches, uh, the Ultra Watch and the Series and the, um, and the Garmin. So obviously between here, for working out and everything, the Ultra Watch. Um, so now between the Ultra and the Garmin, um, they're really toughy. This is a toughie. If you're not really integrated into the Apple ecosystem, you don't use the Apple Music app, um, and you're... If anything, you want like a separation from all of that, then I would probably go towards the Garmin, uh, uh, especially if they're, you know, if the, the, the touch interface on here, even though you don't have to use it all the time, it's still a good portion of the interaction with the watch. I would go with the Garmin. If you're looking for really, really good battery life, like ridiculously good battery life, especially if you go, um, if you go with the Garmin, you can get the solar version um, you can get really crazy battery life. Uh, so for me, uh, I still have the Garmin, obviously, but for me, the win was the Apple Watch. And the reason really came down to is that I like listening to podcasts. I like listening to music. Um, I like if I have to um, get phone calls and text messages, uh, if it, you know, especially if you have a family member and so forth, and you want to be able to be reached anytime. I don't want to have to carry my phone with me. So those are the reasons for me that, thank goodness, it has a bright enough screen. Thank goodness that it has the touch buttons on there to for controlling the buttons now instead of just always being about the touch interface. So for me, those things were really great because I really basically haven't listened to music while I'm, or podcasts or anything for some time because I was using the Garmin watch. So uh, I, for me, I'm, I'm just delighted to be able to go back to just always having the Apple watch 
because that way I can have my music and so forth. Hello, breaking news here. One thing I didn't mention, and that is alerts on the Apple Watch, any of them. And that is you can have an alert for all kinds of different things like distance or heart rate and so forth, which is great, which is great. Except there's one catch. The only way you can get the alert is either by haptic feedback or you can have CC basically notify you the alert. So like say if you're doing one minute walk, one minute run, one minute walk, one minute run, you can have a haptic feedback, which of course you'll probably miss because you're running or walking and not notice a little vibration in the wrist, or you can have the uh, CC, of course, verbally tell you, which of course gets extraordinarily annoying because it basically says one minute and then like a next minute, it goes two minutes. And then 30 minutes later, it's going 30 minutes and then 31 minutes. I'm like, 40 minutes, 41 minutes. It's really nuts. Look, Apple, <laughs> please. We just, I just need a beep, like on the Garmin. So this is definitely something that the Garmin gets a point here. But yeah, it's really annoying. I only get a haptic feedback or a vocal one for alerts. And uh, it really, we need a beep option in there. Um, anyway, back to the video. So one little tip on the Garmin, which is really cool. A lot of people don't know about this little uh, rubber piece you can get on Amazon. Like you get like 10 of them or five of them for like five, seven bucks. It uh, covers the charging area here. So where you charge it, little tip for you, little tip for you on the Garmin's. Keeps the sweat and grime and dirt and who knows what else out of there. So um, cool little thing, little tip on the Garmin's. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps you uh, decide between the different Apple watches and the going or going to a Phoenix. Uh, a Garmin or, or even a, a, a Garmin uh, Forerunner is really good. Um, if you have any questions on which one you should get, uh, just let me know in the comments. Uh, you can reach me, I think, through Facebook as well. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions on that, just let me know. I'll do my best to get back to you on that. All right. Thanks again for watching. This is Junior at the Runner's Desk. I will see you seeing me on the next video. Bye-bye.